Hello everyone and welcome to Wow Crochet. My name is Mary and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to make this beautiful little stitch called the berry stitch. Now it's a little bit gappy at the moment because I used a larger size hook in the tutorial. Um, if you used a, a hook smaller or two hooks smaller actually it will close that gap up and won't look so holy or gappy whatever word you want to use okay it is a beautiful stitch it can be used to make a scarf or blanket or vest or jumper or cardigan or whatever it is that you want to make um, it's quick it works up fast uh, it looks complicated but it isn't it is a basic stitch uh, the stitches you will need are chain stitches double crochet and you'll need to know how to double crochet three together. I do have a tutorial um, somewhere, well, a tutorial on all those things, and including the slit knot in the beginning. Uh, I have them a little bit further back on um, my channel here. You can have a practice and then come back to us. Otherwise, simply just do this tutorial because it is for the beginner crocheter. So if you're an intermediate crocheter, you know, you'll fly through this. If you are a professional, I dare you to do it blindfolded, just for fun. <laughs> Aren't I crazy? Okay, um, for those of you who do know me will know I do like to do some wacky things. And over the next few weeks, or no, not really, but another four weeks time, um, holidays, I'll be getting into holiday time. And I've decided to do some wacky crochet items. And when we say wacky crochet items, not so much the items but where I'll be crocheting. I'll be crocheting in places that you wouldn't even imagine. I'll try even crocheting upside down just for fun. No, it is true, people. I am going to do some wacky, wacky things over the next few months. Why? Oh, I don't know, simply because I can. <laughs> anyway, so for the purpose of this tutorial, we are doing the berry stitch and we are going to get started right now. Good luck, guys. Alrighty, lovely people, for the purpose of the tutorial today, we are going to be using Bendigo Woolen Mills Candyland Luxury Watermelon Jelly. Tis a mouthful, I know, but it is a beautiful colour. Let me bring that out a bit. Um, I think the lighting doesn't do it justice in here, but it is actually the colour of watermelon. It is beautiful. Um, it's a nice thick stitch, even though it says yarn, yeah, sorry, even though it says an eight ply, I find it a little bit thicker. Um, and it's okay because it comes out nice and gorgeous and soft when completed. Um, the shade is 331 die lot, all of those numbers there. Um, if you are going to make a blanket out of this particular pattern, please remember to stick to the same shade and die lot or your project will look a little bit shadowy okay um it doesn't look professional either 200 grams uh from memory um you probably need four or five skeins of this to make a baby blanket you may need a six skein if you want to make uh, a border okay so let's get started uh the stitches you will need are chains uh double crochets and a double crochet three together and it's pretty basic once you know it um, and a quick slip knot if you're not aware of the how to do these stitches and you're new to crochet I do have tutorials here on YouTube you can go through them and check them out if not stick with us here and and try it it is a basic pattern so let's get started so we're gonna just do a quick slip knot okay yarn halfway over yarn all the way over and we're gonna pop the hook in that loop right there and give it a tug now the stitch count calls for a multiple of three <coughs> excuse me a multiple of three and then you add one at the end so uh, let's say um, we'll do 21 okay so it's one two three you can do as many as you like I'm just going to do 21 four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one actually no you know what let's do twenty four and the reason I want to do twenty four I've just thought about it it makes a perfect scarf length 
a width, sorry. And you could, if you wanted to, you could just keep going and make a scarf out of this pattern. So we're going to do 24. So um, what do we do? 21, 22, 23, 24. And then we're just going to add one at the end of that row. That actually makes the perfect width for a scarf if you did 24 to 25 stitches. Okay, from my stitching that is. And I crochet tightly. So really it'll make a perfect width for a scarf. Okay, so to start our row, we are going to put three double crochets in the fifth chain from hook. So there's your first chain. There's your second, there's your third, there's your fourth, and there's your fifth. Be very careful with counting your stitches because if it doesn't add up at the end of the row, you have to take the whole thing undone. So you're doing a normal double crochet in there. And if you're not sure how to do that double crochet, I'll show you again. It's yarn of a hook, pop it in the same stitch, yarn of a hook, pull up a loop, yarn of a hook, pull through two, yarn of a hook, pull through the last two. And we're doing it one more time. And there's your three double crochets in that fifth chain from hook. Easy so far? It's going to get even easier, this row. It's a pretty basic row. Skip two. One, two. Pop your three double crochets in that third stitch. So this row, that is all you're doing. You're skipping two and you're putting three double crochets in your third stitch. Okay. This is really too close, isn't it? Sorry, guys. That's better. So we're skipping two, one, two, and we're putting three double crochets in the third stitch. Okay, my thread's all over the place. Okay, so continue in that manner until you get to the last two stitches and I will meet you up. All right, here we are. We should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven clusters if you did your calculations correct. And then you should have two chains sitting on the end there. One may be a little bit tight, it may not look like one, but it is one right there. And the other one's sitting right in there. Okay, so if you notice from the beginning, we chained up the five. Um, we chained up all of them and we put the first double crochet in the fifth chain. That gave you four chains there. So it's one, two, three chain plus a chain stitch before we started our double crochet. Now, because we have that there, it classifies itself as one double crochet in the beginning of the row. Even though it was just chains, it's classified itself as one double crochet. So we need to end off the row with a double crochet. So let me get a little bit of a close-up, not too much there. So you can see the two stitches says, oh, it's a little bit blurry there for some reason. There, one there and one in that last one. So we're putting a double crochet, just one, in the last one. A little bit fiddly because you've got your tail end there. So turn your work and let's get ready for the next row. Your next row will be chaining up four. One, two, three, four. Okay, right there. Now this is the tricky row. But it's not exactly tricky because once you get the first two sets right, you pretty much know what you're doing. Okay, so I'll get a little bit more of a close-up so you can see. We are going to put our double crochet three together in this cluster set. That's what the double crochet, three double crochets together is called a cluster set in this particular pattern. So we are going to put a normal, as if we're doing a normal double crochet, in that very first stitch right there. Pull up a loop, you're doing your normal double crochet halfway through it, you stop. Right? Then you do yarn over hook, you put it in the second stitch. Yarn over hook, pull up a loop, yarn over hook, pull through two, stop. And then you do yarn over hook, pop it in the third stitch. Yarn over hook, pull up a loop, yarn over hook, pull through two. You should have four loops on your hook. Yarn over hook, pull through all four loops on your hook. Chain one closes that stitch up. A little bit odd, just the first few times, but you'll get it. It's quite basic. Start your double crochet. Get it ready for your next stitch. Pop it in. 
pull through two like you would normally stop then yarn over hook pop it in your next stitch yarn over hook pull up a loop yarn over hook pull through two stop yarn over hook pop it in your next stitch yarn over hook pull up a loop yarn over hook pull through two don't stop there because <laughs> this is where we finish it off four loops on your hook yarn over hook pull through all four loops on your hook chain one and get ready for the next stitch and that is what you need to do all the way until you get to the end of the row when you get to this last one stop and I shall meet you up all right here we are on our last set so it's yarn over hook put it through your first double crochet like you were all the way through hold it there do the second one through two hold it there do your third one through two and now yarn over hook pull through all four loops on your hook chain one now with your last stitch you need to put a normal just a basic double crochet not in that next chain but in the other chain so it's actually the third chain so not that one the very next chain so you've skipped a stitch and you've popped it there and that's your double crochet all right so let me bring it out for you you will find that at the moment your work is kind of pulling in a little bit it's just you know a bit of tight crocheting if you're a tight like me it'll pull in um other than that it doesn't look too bad okay so we're going to get ready for our next row let's pull some yarn we've got here all right we've done row one row two and let's get ready for row three okay now with row three we are chaining up three which is one two three i'm sorry i'm too far from you sorry guys so you've chained up three now i'll we'll have to get a little bit closer so you can see this part here all right so you see the three we did before the three double crochet three together it has a top stitch right there what you need to do not in the the chain space but over here you need to put your three double crochets that you were doing in this first row you need to pop that in there so we're going to do first double crochet in there one and then two and it's really quite visible so you shouldn't miss it three and that is all you're doing in this row you are going to find each gap or space it's not exactly a chain space well it sort of is you're going to be putting your triple or your cluster set in there cluster set in there but not in this big space chain space down here so that's classified as your chain space because there's your chain we're putting it in the cluster set in there so I want you to keep doing your three double crochets in each of those little gaps spaces whatever you want to call them and I'll meet you at the end actually I didn't finish the row because I just wanted to show you something the actual stitch the gap itself is there but what you need to where you need to put your cluster set is not exactly in that gap it, it is but it's only between the two you know your V that you usually put your normal double crochet in that's where you're putting it so that little stitch there should be down you shouldn't have that stitch with you do you understand so I'll show you do the cluster set here and then I'll do it again in the next one and then you can see the difference between what I'm saying okay so that should be see that line right there that should be down if you haven't got it down it looks like my first one and oh, no, my first one's fine too just make sure you're putting it through the two stitches rather than all three if that makes any sense and I'll show you again see you could accidentally just pick up that loop there that's what I meant see that loop right there you don't want to pick up that you want to put it through 
just those, just your V stitch, okay? Your little V on top, which is the V we put it through when we're doing normal double crochets. So that's where you want to put your three. Okay, so I'll show you where it is again. See that little thing right there? It should be there. It is easy to accidentally pick it up. So don't accidentally pick it up. That's what you should it should look like. All right, continue in that and I'll get you to the end of the row. All right, so here we are on our last cluster set. Now this is where that little trick I just showed you before can be an issue if you don't put it through those two chains there it's going to look like we've made a mistake so you must get it through the two chains like that or the two v's or one v but the two stitches if that makes any sense so you're doing all three in there like that okay and i'll show you what it looks like there okay I'll bring it out a bit so you can see it Okay, how pretty does it look? Oh, I'm loving it so much. This this could make the perfect blanket and the perfect scarf and the perfect, I don't know, vest or jumper or cardigan, whatever you want to use it for. It can be used for anything, okay? So, now with your next section, uh, what do we do? We do we, did we chain one? I forgot to chain one. No, we didn't chain one. We don't chain one. My apologies. My apologies. Okay, okay, let me have another look at that. Okay, so yours truly almost forgot the pattern there. <laughs> I do apologize. So you're skipping that first chain and you're going to do a double crochet in your next chain right there. Okay, and there you have it. Yes, that's correct. See, it's nice and straight now. Before I was kind of doing it a little bit funny and I thought it's not going to make it, but it is because I'm forgetting to skip that chain here. So I do apologize. Okay, I've edited it a little bit so that it hasn't affected you. So that don't even know why I'm apologizing. <laughs> okay, so now we are going to turn our row again. And uh, we are on one, two, three. We are now on our fourth row, which will be the um double crochet three together set okay so now we have to chain up four which is one two three four okay now there's our three double crochets again so we are going to start our double crochet in that first stitch stop it there yarn of a hook do it in the second stitch stop it there yarn of a hook and pop it in that third stitch there okay and now you chain one and you do it again so it's pretty basic um, it does it doesn't look basic to look at it looks like you have worked really hard and and it was difficult and the rest of it but it's not it's very very basic or if not basic repetitive so once you get the first two done you pretty much know what you're doing with the rest. Don't forget to chain in between each each uh, cluster set so um, you don't skip anything. If you miss those chains, it's going to put your pattern out of whack and make your piece look a little bit out of shape. So remembering that chain that I just did right there. Okay, so you're doing your normal cluster set in there. I'm hoping that the journey for you, your crochet journey that is, is um, is as much fun as it is for me. I've had many years of practice and I will keep going. And you know, there's one trick I've learned in crochet. There are never any wrong stitches. There are just new stitches. So if you've made a mistake in a project and you've made a mistake two rows below or one row below, continue the mistake and just add it in as a new stitch. That's pretty much my theory <laughs> and i'm sticking to that <laughs> many times i've made items out of a mistake and thought oh this mistake actually looks great all right so here we are we're at the end of, of the row 
we have one more cluster set to go which is here so it's we're going to do our normal crochet three together like that and like that one chain one now don't forget with this section we are going to put a we've done our chain one haven't we and we're going to put a double crochet in that third stitch oh sorry i'm not in frame there in that third stitch it's a little tight stitch right there yours may not be as tight as mine but mine is tight and it's there so i know and i've used a larger hook and i still crochet tight okay there you go so let's have a look at our piece for now oh my thread is all tangled up sorry about that that's what you should have so far okay so far it's looking good i think the right way is that way but i don't think it matters too much with this pattern okay so there you go what i want you to do now is the last two rows that we just did okay i want you to continue in that manner for about five more rows and then we'll meet up and we'll have a look or no make it three more rows and then we'll meet up and we'll have a look okay i'll meet you up okay lovely people this is what you should have so far how pretty is this now let's get a close-up of it just for a minute and have a look at the way it all sits it literally looks like it's a bit of a wave happening up that second row where we did the double crochet three together now imagine it in contrast colors so here you've got one two three four five six seven rows right imagine every second row in contrast colors so you've done the first two and you do that in maybe white or a gold or a whatever color you like orange whichever color you think would look nice with this watermelon based color so you know crochet the list is endless you can make anything out of this stitch from scarves to vests to blankets I think this would make a great baby blanket um, given the right size hook it will tend to close that up a little bit so you won't have as many gaps it'll be gappy but not as much as that that's a little bit more gappy because I use the larger hook on purpose for a, your um, visual purpose because my crocheting is very tight and you won't be able to see these stitches so now that we have completed this go ahead and make yourself and create I don't know a blanket or a scarf that is the size of a scarf you can keep going and make that into a scarf if you like if you want to put tassels you can on the ends across the bottom up the top whoever whatever you like to do with your scarves and you can also put a row of single crochet around the whole rim and that's a basic plain border just to lock everything in place don't forget if you are going to create something large you need to wash it in some nice fabric softener if it's a pure wool this is a pure wool and pin it down on a board nice and straight and that's called blocking and leave it there for a day or two days however long it takes for it to dry take it undone and then pop your border on okay little tip from me and there you have it you have now completed the berry stitch Thank you so much for watching if you did like this tutorial please give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and hit the little bell button so you can receive further tutorials and ciao for now